All right. What's going on, YouTube family? And welcome back to another edition of Top Down Analysis with me, T. Hobbs. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining the Trader Shop, giving us a little bit of your time. Um, I hope these market review, market top down analysis have been helping you. Um, they've definitely been helping me throughout the week. I go back and watch them like on a daily or like every other day just to see kind of what I was thinking about, you know, with a clear head, with no pressure, stuff like that. Um, but before we get into that, I also want to thank you guys so much for helping us reach uh, almost 1700 subs. I think we're about 20 subs away from 1700, something like that, 10 subs away, something like that. So that's all, you know, it's it's all about the journey um, as a business, right? Not just as a trader, but as a business, we do run a YouTube channel. So like seeing that growth, we always want to make sure we give thanks for myself and Jay Seals. And always remember to tip those, tip the barber, AKA hit the like and subscribe button. Use the discount code down beneath if you want to uh, use Apex. Um, it's some weird code. I couldn't personalize it. I just, I'm, I'm guessing I'm, I guess I'm not big enough to personalize it. Whatever, I don't care. Um, but also, if you're interested in joining the uh, Discord, the link to the Discord is in the description down below. It's 40 bucks a month. It is uh, $15 a week if you just want to give us a, a try out there. We're having some amazing results. Got a couple people that are actually thinking about quitting their jobs and, and going full time. It's not all credit to, to me or just any individual in the Discord, but we do foster a really good community over there. That I think you guys could benefit from if you're struggling with your trading. Now that we got that all the way, now that we got all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the top down analysis. So over there here on the left, we have the S&P 500 and on the right, we have the NASDAQ and it's on the monthly chart. So as we always do, I don't even remember what my prediction was. I didn't even check today. Honestly, I was a little too busy, but I'm pretty sure I said we were going to all time highs and breaking all time highs because that's what the structure was telling me. Right. And well, lo and behold, that's what we did. Right. We broke all time highs, got above all time highs, put it in another all time high. NVIDIA continued to rally. Uh, and we'll talk about the stock split and all that stuff here in a little bit. But ultimately, if we're just identifying what's going on on the monthly chart, like I always tell you guys, I'm not really worried per se about the monthly chart until those 19 days and three hours in this situation are completed. But I can gauge where price is at the current moment. And you can get an, a good idea of how the candlesticks are being formed right now with almost half of the month being completed okay we're in the second week of june as we all know the catalyst in the second week of every month the second and third week are just like that's the meat and potatoes of the direction of the market right so of course we have cpi we have core cpi we have fomc we're hearing from the fed speaker we have nvidia uh stock split that takes effect on monday we have so many catalysts going into this week and next week that this structure, although it does look bullish, if there was a chance for it to go bearish, this will be the week and next week will be the week that it's going to turn bearish. OK, so based off the structure, what we see right now, we see full body candles, right? No doji, no barely any wick to the downside or the upside, which is which is extremely bullish. Right. We're staying within the trend. There's nothing telling me on the monthly currently that the market is going back bearish okay therefore i'm looking at the market with bullish eyes not because i'm a bull but because the structure tells me to be bullish how did we close the previous month we closed with an aggressive buy candle that got sold off into in the last month but when i say sold off into we maybe took 10 percent of the overall candle movement and then the market couldn't even trade back down to 50 percent of the previous candle instead we traded higher put in a new high 14 points off of 5,400, which I know in my previous video, I talked about us seeing 5,400 either this week or next week. Over here on the NASDAQ, you got the exact same thing. We traded back down, not even 50%, maybe like 10% of the previous month's candle and traded right back above to 19,138. I believe on my last week's prediction, I talked about 19,2 to 19,3. We got to 19,13850. Hey, whatever. Right. So let's drop down to the weekly and let's talk about the candle structure on the weekly. Again, we analyze the candle structure. What did we get the previous week, the 28th of May on the Nasdaq? We tried to trade back down into structure. We failed to break below the previous candle and immediately bought up the wick. If we buy up wicks like this, right, is it an indication, right? If we're just explaining thoroughly what is happening right here, right? 
when the market comes back down where it previously found buyers, this wick is an indication that it's finding buyers again. All right. Those buyers caused a break of the high above 19,000 was a new high they got put in. We went 150 points above that. Again, very strong move by the bulls. No indication that the bears are stepping up to the plate. When we drop down to the four hour, we'll see that there's a nice healthy pullback going, going on right now, but it's not a pullback that yells to me break of structure, change of character, or the end of said trend, all right? If we go over here on ES, it's more of the same. You can see that ES, again, put in that same wick, right? Stepping back into structure. The only difference is that the previous week uh, or the May 13th candle was actually swept on ES and we immediately found buyers versus over on NQ, that candle never truly got swept, okay? But what was the resounding result? It was the exact same. The market came back up, put in a new high, and then went much higher than that high, right? By about 20 points, which is very significant on ES, right? I think the next level that we're gonna be looking at is probably that 5,400 level, but we'll get to predictions as we get lower in price. So let's drop down to the daily and we'll break down exactly what's happening on the daily candles. Let me stress these out a little bit because they just look better on the daily when they're stretched out a little bit. All right, there we go. So first thing you'll notice over here on the NASDAQ on the right is you'll notice an aggressive, what most ICT traders would call fair value gap, right? Anytime we get this huge rally like this, right? With no freaking wicks, no nothing, just full body, it creates a gap in price. So the one thing that I do uh, is I like to mark like 50% of this level, right? Because usually the market likes to come back into roughly about 15, 50% of this gap. And you can see that that level sits at about 18,088.50. I think if the market does pull back, however, I think there's a chance that we go much lower than that due to the fact that there's a huge gap in price between this week and this week here, right? That would, the market could come back down and at least close this gap back down to like the 18736 range on NQ. But in regards to the current candle structure, we do have a doji candle at the top of trend, which is a which is literally a screen for a reversal. However, the very next day, <laughs> the market traded above that candle. Right. So it's like, OK, well, we did look like we might reverse, but now we traded above that candle. So two equal dojis up here should be interesting to see what happens. I think we get a pullback, right? Heading into CPI, all this good stuff. I think we start to trade back down because that's basically what we've done this entire road up. We get an aggressive push heading into news data. We get a nice gap in price. We trade back down into said gap. We rally higher, come back down, retest those lows put in that consolidation, go higher, sweep the low, sweep the high, and then we do the same thing over, right? So what am I expecting? We just took out a high. I'm expecting some consolidation. And then for like the uh, the news candle, maybe we get an aggressive sweep down, right? And then if we don't break these lows, these lows all the way down here is the actual institutional low, right? Institutions aren't trading on the five minute. They're not looking at the 15 second, right? They're looking at the daily, they're looking at the weekly, they're looking at the monthly. So this area right here, structurally 18,240 on ES, I mean on NQ, and then 5206 on ES is going to be in control of all of the movement above it. Everything below this wick is considered bullish character. So no matter how hard we done, no matter if we sweep this low and come right back up, no matter if we get all the way down here, it doesn't matter. What you need to understand is this is bearish character coming down, but it's still trading into bullish character as long as this wick stays alive, right? This wick too, right, to an, to an extent, but this wick right here is the one that price needs to stay above. I don't care what goes on through core CPI, just remember that, right? If you're looking to be extremely bearish, you wanna wait till this gets closed beneath and then we come back up and retest it and fail. That'll be my indication that the market is ready to start selling off and correcting, right? In regards to this candle structure, again, there's not much to derive from the doji other than the market basically thought, okay, buyers want to trade higher, sellers want to trade lower, but the buyers are still very much in control, right? You can see where we ended. Again, that definition, the definition of buyers taking over 
is going to be when we drop below these 18 or our sellers taking over is when we drop below 18 too, right? We go over to ES, it's the exact same story. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Essentially 53.1375, right? Would be the area where the gap needs to be closed. And then the fair value gap, which I think we already tapped into on ES, right? We're already tapping into 53.3575 has already kind of tapped or been been mitigated, so to speak, right? I think that there's an opportunity for bears to trade lower than this, though, to close some of these gaps on the daily. All right. Now that we got that information out on the daily, let's jump down to the four hour and then we'll talk some catalysts and then we'll get you guys out of here. Okay. So dropping down to the four hour, I'll go ahead and pull pull up uh, my objective tree here or my object tree, sorry. And then we'll turn on some of the levels that I'm actually looking to trade at or watching going into next week. Again, do I drop down to lower time frames at three hour, the one hour, the the uh, two hour, the 90 minute, 45 and 30? Yes, I do. But I share those levels with my Discord. If you want to get those levels, you can join the Discord because I'll go over that right after this is done streaming. I'll go over that. But if not, that's OK, too, because this should be enough to get you what you need out of the market as well. All right. So first and foremost, we identify the all time high. Previous day high is at 53.85 on ES. All time high, previous day high is at 19,154.75 on EQ. Daily FIB, meaning the previous day's 50% level, sits at 19,048 on NQ, 53.59.25 on ES. And then the previous day low sits at uh, 53.45.25 on ES, 18,099.150 on NQ. Now, what are we seeing right now? Well, we're seeing clear uh, a clear consolidation at the high, right? Consolidating on the four hour but you see this deadly four hour candle starting to form, right? The question we wanna ask ourselves is when that bell rings for Tokyo session, do they buy this back up immediately or do they continue selling trying to get through this wick? If they sell past this wick, the area that I'm looking for on ES, on the four hour, I know this is a big zone and it can be broken down into smaller time frame zones, but again, I share those levels with the Discord. So the four hour between 53.13.50 or 53.13.25 and 52.48.75 is the area where I would be looking for price to start closing a lot of these gaps. This gap has already been closed, but this gap right here at 288 through roughly about 53.13 is a gap that I would definitely keep my eye on. We already closed this gap right here, but the market could come down one more time, right? If you're thinking about the sequence and the delivery of price, if you don't know what that is, again, join the Discord. But if you look at the sequence and delivery of price, we got this wick here. We got another wick here. We anticipate this wick being swept into this area, maybe potentially closing this gap before we go all the way back up and put in higher highs. Doesn't have to happen that way, but it's a really good thing to look at if you understand the sequence and the delivery of price. If we go over here on NQ, the same type of levels exist, right? where the market has to make a decision up here at these highs. We tried two times on NQ, and I feel like this is a much better depiction because NQ, instead of breaking the high like ES did, well, it broke the high, but it looks more like a double top, right? We barely broke the high before starting to trade down. This looks bearish to me, right? Doesn't mean that the, the market is turning bearish, but it's more convincing that the sellers are potentially looking to trade down lower. Again, this bullish character, just this area right here, will be identified, the ending of it would be breaking through 938, but it doesn't turn the market bearish. It turns this side of price bearish, whereas we could be heading back in to bullish character. On the four hour, that bullish character is gonna be identified by the four hour demand at 18,755.50 all the way through that wick at 18442, ultimately changing character if we drop below the range break at 824125. The areas that I would watch out for in particular, right, as we get closer to price, the areas that I would first watch out for is if, if it's not 18755, then I would definitely watch out for 18651 and then the center of this demand zone at 859375. Now, as far as predictions on the weekly, right? We jump back out to the weekly time frame. One thing that I like to do is I like to find out where price closed 
the prior week. And the way we do that is we just look right up here. We hover above this candle and the C is for close. OK, so we look at the C here. We close at 19,375. So we go here to our horizontal rate. We put a line at 18,000 or 19,375. Right? This is how I predict or not predict. This is how I use my predictions, right? I don't care. It doesn't have to be accurate. But I look to see where we closed, right, on the week. Okay. The reason why I want to see that is because price on NQ usually travels about three, two to three percent with a high volatility week, right? On average, right? Based on where the volatility index is. Right. So if we look at two to three percent to the upside from the close, right, we're looking at about five hundred, uh, about three percent. So we're looking at nineteen thousand five. Right. If we go to two percent because we've been moving about two percent lately, two percent to two point five. We're looking at about like nineteen three five four. Right. So could the Nasdaq move uh, between three to five hundred to the upside this week? I mean, just look at what it's done before. Right now to the downside, we're looking at the same thing. We go to about two percent. Right, 2.5, 2%, literally puts us at the end of this range. And this is why I'm so interested in what the market wants to do at the end of this range, because this percentage, not only does it match structure, right? It also gives the opportunity for the market to pull back that two and a half percent and then rally all the way up two and a half percent, technically moving five percent, but only showing that it moved two and a half percent. So that's why I would much rather see the pullback first, play the market bearishly to the downside, and then play it bullishly back to the upside, expecting that big rally maybe by Thursday or Friday. Right. So that's that's kind of what we've been seeing. The same thing over on ES. If we take that same thesis, right? We take a horizontal array and we find where the market closed: 53, 55, 75. Okay. So we go 53, 55. Again, don't gotta be perfect. Oh wait, it's right there. It's literally a green line at the close. Okay. All right. So where the market closes, we take the, the range. And again, on ES, rule of 16, the market usually moves about one to 2% on ES. Uh, about 70 to 80 points is what we've been moving. When I say rule of 16, I'm basically saying the VIX, divide the VIX's level by uh, 16 and you'll get the average movement of the daily movement on the day. So on the weekly, you do the same type of thesis, right? So we're looking at 1.5 to 2%, looking at ES moving about 80 to 100 points, right? Even though it's done that in a day, it's overall, where is it going to close though, right? So we go 1.5, we're looking at 54.35 from this area. If we go back to the downside, that same 1.5, it puts us right in the center of where I want to trade which is at 52.75.25. So statistically speaking, right, based off just the average movement, it matches up with my thesis. So that also makes me feel good. Does it mean that my thesis is 100% correct? No, like nobody knows exactly how price is gonna be delivered. What we do understand is the sequence in which price does tend to repeat and where it's being delivered to. So let's go ahead and take a look at some catalysts. Then we'll break down the volatility index. So if we look at this week, June 10th, there's not really much on a Monday. I still expect the market to move nicely on Monday because I think people will be moving into positions. And then just based off the structure of where we are, we're not in consolidation per se. We're actually breaking down from that consolidation. So I expect price to move pretty nicely on Monday and potentially going into Tuesday in preparation for Wednesday where it's going to really move, right? Um, if I had to guess, I think we trade down to start the week and then we end up trading up because I honestly don't think the market cares about the news. Like, I think the market is just going to use the move, the news to go higher. I don't care if the CPI is good or bad. I really don't think the market cares at this point. I think that we're in a bubble and it doesn't matter during a bubble. The data doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore because the market just is extremely euphoric with no fear. But that's just my own personal thoughts. We go into Tuesday. The thing that I would be looking out for is the 10 year bond auction at 101 p.m. That is one that secretly moves the market very, very nicely sometimes, but it's hit or miss. But I would definitely mark it on my data calendar, right, to pay attention to. We go into June 12th. This is the big day. We got four CPI, CPI month over month, year over year. We got crude oil inventories if you want to trade oil instead of dealing with the, dealing with the indices in general. Federal funds rate, the FOMC economic projections, the FOMC statement. We get to hear from Mr. Purple Tie himself, right? We got federal budget balance. We got the press conference, right? Everything is happening on Wednesday, 
which is crazy. But it doesn't stop there. Thursday, in the morning, for PPI. Again, repeat, repeat, repeat. PPI month over month. PPI month over month. Unemployment claims, right? And then it just continues from there, right? More yellow folder, yellow folder news. And then again, mark this on your calendar because this is the secret one. People always fade, and I'm telling you, it makes waves. 30-year bond option at 101 p.m. on Thursday. We go into Friday. What do we got? Uh, what is it? It was, oh yeah, here it is right here. University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. Every time I see this, I used to fade it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I used to fade it and be like, nah, that shit ain't going to do nothing. No, 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 no. Consumer sentiment, I feel like, is like the last catalyst before the market makes that huge move, right? So it wouldn't be surprised. It would not be surprising to me, whatever direction we choose this week, that by Friday, we're done playing games and we rally, we rally or we dump in that direction all day long. Right. So just be on the lookout for that after 10 on Friday to see what happens. All right. So let's talk about the volatility index last and then we'll get you guys out of here. So we look at the volatility index on the weekly time frame. Right. If you can't find levels on the NASDAQ or NASDAQ or whatever you want to call it on the NASDAQ or the ES, because you keep screaming, oh, we're at all time highs. We're at all time highs. Just just relax. Take a look at the volatility index and the volatility index is not at all time lows yet. Therefore, if you take down here and you turn B adjacent off, right, which I already have it off. If you turn it on, you won't see it. But if you turn it off, you'll be able to identify the levels on the volatility index, right, that we haven't broken down to yet, right? Doesn't mean that we will. I mean, it doesn't mean that we won't. But the all-time low on the volatility index sits at 10.25. Therefore, what I do, because the volatility index correlates directly with the options chain of that of the S&P 500, I know that if the volatility index finds support or resistance, that the market will follow in the selling or the buying based off the volatility index. If that makes no sense to you, then fade me at your own risk. Cool with that. Doesn't bother me at all. However, if we're looking at the volatility index, well, what did we do here? There is a sequence that the market follows, right? When the market broke above 14.055, Right, right here, it turned bullish, okay? Before the market leaves and goes completely bullish, right? What does the market like to do? It likes to take out all of the early buyers. All of the late sellers are stuck right here, right? But the market did not break this level. Now, let's go back in time and figure out where this level is and what happened at this level. We go all the way back here. Do, 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 do. We can see that this, hold on. What is going on here? Hang on a second. Okay, okay, we get it. So what happened at this level is the market created a huge gap in price from 1295. Sorry, the gap threw me off. From 1295 into 1403 and some would say 1435. So what happened here? Well, I'll tell you, the contract switched over, but that doesn't mean that there wasn't selling that happened through here or buying in the sense that we're just talking about the chart. If we're just talking about technical analysis, right? What happened right here was a gap closure has now taken place. So can the market continue to trade down from here? Yeah, we stay tuned and we pay attention, but don't fall in love with just the bullish side. Understand that there is a bearish case to be made, including for using the VIX as a key monitor. So what I'll be watching for is to see if the VIX is going to break this level, start trading down into 1250 to roughly about 1224. However, if the VIX holds this level, starts to trade back above here and then retest and puts in a higher low, I'm going to have all the information that I need to start looking to short this market. Again, guys, I really hope that this information is helping you. I really hope that you, you know, you appreciate everything that's coming out of here. And if not, hit the dislike button. But, but if you do like it, tip the barbers, aka hit the like and subscribe button. Turn those notification bells on so you get notified every time we go live and or put out a video. For myself and Justin here at the Trader Shop, we appreciate even each and every one of you. And we want to wish you guys uh, good luck in the markets this week. My name is T. Hobbs. This is the Trader Shop. Catch you on the next one. Peace.